Today we're going to go over every single type of dosage calculation problem that your nursing school is going to ask you for your dosage calculation exam. Hey guys, my name is Will Kirkpatrick. I'm a nursing educator inside the Coursetta platform. And I want to let you guys know we do have a dosage calculation worksheet that you can download inside the Coursetta platform if you're a member. And if you guys want any additional nursing tutoring for this specific topic to help you best prepare, make sure you guys contact us and hit the link in the description below. All right, so let's get right into it. So first starting off with what are the rules of dosage calculation? These are the things you need to know that are very simple. Now guys, make sure you write these rules down because these rules will make or break your exam. As you already know, most nursing schools require 100% on your dosage calculation exam to continue in the program. So let's go over these rules. You never round any numbers until it is your actual final answer. A lot of common mistakes that nursing students make is that they'll round a number that they get before they actually get to their final answer. Don't round until you get your final answer. So what I'm saying is if you have a number that has like five digits after, so it's 59.55555, don't round it. Make sure you just keep going. Use that number for your next formula if you have to use it. And then you only round it your final answer. Now, you also just need to know the simple mathematical rules with rounding up or rounding down. So if it is 0.5 or greater, then you round up. If it's 0.4 or lower, then you round down. Next, you never have any trailing zeros in your answer. So for example, a good number would be 0.6. A bad number would be 0.60. You never want to leave a trailing zero at the end. And then lastly, with the rules, you always want to zero before your decimal point. So don't ever just put like 0.6. You want to put 0.6. Next thing you need to know before we get into the formulas is abbreviations. There's lots of different abbreviations that they may use. So make sure you guys write all these down. We're just going to populate it up here and you guys can write these down. Now, with every dosage calculation problem, you're going to have two simple steps. Step number one is always converting your metrics. So if you have a problem that they want to convert to a milligram and you have your dosage that is in micrograms, you need to know how to convert that from micrograms to milligrams. Now, these are the metrics that you guys really need to know. So make sure you guys write all of these down. So the conversion, like I said, is the first step to every dosage calculation problem. So how do you convert volume? So volume, whether that's a dose or an actual volume, so milliliters or liters, we want to know that from larger to smaller, you can move that decimal place three points to the right. It's as simple as that. So if you have a larger number, so say, for example, you want to convert four grams to milligrams, you just simply move that decimal place three points to the right, and then that is your answer. So four grams is 4,000 milligrams. And then same thing from smaller to larger, you want to move that decimal point three points to the left. So think if you want a larger number, you want to go to the left. They both start with L, right? So large equals left. So if you have a 4,000 milligrams, and you want to convert to grams, then you move that decimal point to the left three times, and then now you have four grams. All right, another thing is weight conversion. So we need to know how to convert a kilogram to pounds and then vice versa. So you need to know that one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. A thing that our instructors used to say is, I like my weight in kgs because it's lower. So if I'm naturally actually 200 pounds, but my weight looks lower because I'm weighing in kgs. So you like your weight in kgs because the kg number is lower than the pounds because one kilogram equals 2.2 pounds. So if you're wanting to convert from a kg to pounds, say, for example, you have 52 kgs. So what we would do is 52 kgs times that 2.2 because every kg equals 2.2 pounds. So 52 times 2.2 equals 114 pounds. And then if we want to do the opposite, so we go from pounds to kgs, Say we have 160 pounds in this case. So 160 pounds divided by 2.2 is 72.73 kgs. So you guys are going to want to know how to do volume conversions and weight conversions like this. So the next step, so step two, would be to use the dosage formula. So there are three types of dosage formulas that you guys will need to know. It's the medication dosage formula, the IV infusion dosage formula, which includes three different types, and then we have unit dosage per hour. So let's go over the medication dosage formula first. So if you guys use this formula, you guys see here that there's a D, H, Q, and A. So if you guys write this out, D equals desired dose. So let's use the actual practice problem to apply what we have here. So we have a healthcare provider's prescription reads morphine sulfate, four milligrams. So that would be your desired dose, okay? The medication ampule reads morphine sulfate, 10 milligrams per ml. All right, so what do we have? So H stands for what do we have? 
All right, we have 10 milligrams as the dosage available. And then Q stands for the quantity of available dose. So what is the quantity? So the quantity could be the volume or the amount of that available dose. So examples would be anything with milligrams, milliliters, or tablets. So in this case, we have morphine sulfate that is 10 milligrams per one ml. That's the quantity. So that would be one here. So the nurse prepares how many mls to administer the correct dose. So if you use that formula, we have desired dose is four milligrams. What we have is 10 milligrams. So we place it here. And then the quantity of the available dose is one ml. So A equals your answer. So you just use this formula. So four divided by 10 times one, you will get 0.4 mls. All right, so let's use another practice problem. A healthcare provider's prescription reads phenytoin 0.4 grams orally twice daily. A medication label states that each capsule is 100 milligrams. The nurse prepares how many capsules to administer one dose? All right, guys, so let's use that formula. So what is the desired dose? The desired dose from the physician is 0.4 grams. Okay, so what do we have? We have a capsule that is 100 milligrams. Okay, and what is the quantity? So they want to administer one dose. Now, before we even use that formula, remember, we have step number one and step number two. If you remember, step number one is conversion. So what the doctor wants is different than what we have. So we need to convert grams to milligrams. So if you guys remember, grams is a larger number to a smaller number. So we move to the right three times. So we have 0.4 grams. Let's move it over three times. And that equals 400 milligrams. So when we apply it to our formula, What's our desired dose? It is 400 milligrams. What do we have? We have 100 milligrams. And what is the quantity of the available dose? Is one dose. So this equals four capsules. All right, guys, so now moving on to IV infusion calculation formulas. There's three different types of formulas that you'll need to know. One is when they ask about mLs per hour. Another one is when they ask about how much time the infusion will take. And then another one is drops per minute. So GTT slash minute. Hey guys, it's Wilker Patrick, nursing educator in Psych Corsetta. I wanted to let you guys know that I will help you with anything you need at any time if you just send me a text at 940-218-4062. 940-218-4062. Let's get back to the video. So let's first start with MLs per hour. So when a question asks you about the MLs per hour, this is the formula you want to know. So we use the total volume in mLs divided by the number of hours, and that equals your mLs per hour. You want to make sure to write this down. You always round to a whole number with mLs per hour. Now, sometimes they ask the question, and the time is given in minutes. All right, so if they give it in minutes, this is how you would convert that over. Once again, you do total volume in mLs divided by the number of minutes they gave you, and then you just times it by 60, which is 60 minutes because there's 60 minutes in an hour, and that will give you mLs per hour. Now, let's directly use this in a practice problem. We have a healthcare provider prescribes 3,000 mLs of D5W to be administered over a 24 hour period. The nurse determines that how many mLs per hour will be administered to the client. All right, so let's identify where is the volume of mLs total? So they prescribe 3,000 mLs, so that would be right here. We, this is our total volume in mLs. And then we want to find the number of hours. They ordered it to be administered over a 24-hour period. So we would have 3,000 divided by 24 hours. Okay, so then how many mLs per hour would be administered to the client? We just simply divide it, and we get 125 mLs per hour. All right, so let's now go over when they ask about infusion time. So the formula, when they ask about how long it's going to take, then you want to use this one. Total volume to infuse goes on the top. Then we want to divide that by the infusion rate, so mLs per hour. And then that equals your infusion time. So let's use it in a practice problem. A healthcare provider prescribes 1,000 mLs of D5W to infuse at a rate of 125 mLs per hour. The nurse determines that it will all take how many hours for one liter to infuse. All right. So if we remember that formula, it's total volume to infuse divided by infusion rate equals your infusion time. 
So where is the total volume to infuse? Well, they prescribed 1,000 ml. So that is your total volume to infuse. And then at a rate of 125 ml per hour. So that would be your infusion rate. So you should get 1,000 ml divided by 125 ml per hour, and that equals 8 hours. All right, guys, so drops per minute. Now, this is probably one of the most difficult ones to grasp. So make sure you guys pay close attention to this. The formula for drops per minute is total volume in mLs divided by the number of minutes, that will give you a number of minutes, times the drop factor, which will make sense here in a second, equals the drops per minute, so GTT slash minute. Now a rule I want you guys to remember is you use this formula when the problem states a drop factor. So when you see that there is times a drop factor, it will specifically say in the problem that there is a drop factor of X, for example. All right, so let's go into a practice problem. Gentamicin sulfate, 80 milligrams in 100 mLs normal saline, is to be administered over 30 minutes. The drop factor, there's that keyword, so we know we're going to use drop factor formula, is 10 drops per 1 mL. The nurse sets the flow rate at how many drops per minute? All right, so let's find these factors for our formula. So where is the total volume in mLs? So we have an order of gentamicin that's 80 milligrams and 100 mLs. Ignore the 80 milligrams because it really doesn't have anything to do with your problem. We want to know the volume. So the total volume in mLs, that would be 100 mLs. So let's put that here. It is to be administered over 30 minutes. Remember, we have a number of minutes. So we put 30 minutes underneath. And then times the drop factor. So the drop factor is 10 drops per 1 mL. So we just put times 10 here. And now we have our answer. So when we divide that and then multiply, we have 33.33 drops per minute. Now another thing, you guys, once again, you always want to round to a whole number. Same thing with mLs per hour. You want to round to a whole number that is 33 drops per minute. All right, guys, so we're lastly going to go over the infamous unit dosage per hour calculation. This is another type of question that you'll get in your dosage calculation. But if you guys can get this down, you guys will be more than okay for your test. Step number one is you want to get the units per mL first. How do you do that? You use this formula. So you want to use the total amount of units in a solution divided by the total volume of that solution. So that just gives you the units per one mL. All right, so step number two would be to calculate the mLs per hour. All right, so we get dose per hour desired divided by unit per mL concentration. So we use from step one that unit per mL and we plug it into the bottom. We want to find dose per hour desired. All right, so we divide those and that will give you the mLs per hour. All right, so let's apply a practice problem. So we have a healthcare provider prescribes heparin sodium 1200 units per hour by continuous intravenous infusion. The nurse has heparin sodium, 20,000 units per 250 mLs. What rate in mLs per hour should the nurse set the infusion pump to deliver 1,200 units per hour? All right, guys, don't freak out. I know that's a lot of numbers. It sounds confusing, but let's just simply set up the formulas that we have. So we have two formulas to use to get our answer. Step number one, what do we want to do? Get the units per mL. All right, so let's find it. The formula is total amount of units in the solution divided by the total volume of the solution. So where in this problem is the total amount of units in the solution? All right, so we have heparin sodium that is 20,000 units per 250 mLs. All right, so 20,000 units goes on the top because that is our total amount of units in the solution. And then the total volume of that solution is 250 mLs. So we simply divide it, and that would equal 80 units per mL. Now moving on to step two. Step two is to calculate the mLs per hour. The formula, dose per hour desired, divided by the units per mL concentration that we just found. All right, so we know that 80 goes here because we just found the units per mL. Now we just need to find the dose per hour desired. The order, red. We want 12,000 units per hour. So that is your dose per hour. So it goes 12,000 over 80 
And now you have your answer in mLs per hour equals 15 mLs per hour. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful in understanding DOSHA's calculation. Those are the formulas that you're going to need to know for your exam and nursing school. If you guys are needing additional support, once again, become a member in the Course Setup platform. When you become a member, you'll have access to the DOSHA's calculation worksheet and also a nursing educator that will help you with understanding all those concepts and then all the other concepts in nursing school as well. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, first of all, thank you so much for watching the video entirely through. It makes our day if we know that nursing school got a little bit easier after watching one of our videos. If you guys like this video, make sure you like it, subscribe to the channel for more, and drop down in the comments for any more ideas that you need help with nursing school. If you want to contact me personally, it's 940-218-4062. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video.